Good morning. Today is the eighth day of February in this uh, 20, 22nd year of our Lord. We have another gray and gloomy day outside today. I think the temperatures may get a little bit warmer. I'm hoping so uh, as tomorrow morning I have a earlier morning tea time. So I'll be out golfing and when I return, I will try my best to post a devotional. I uh, hope your day goes well today in whatever you choose to do. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Um, a couple of people to keep in prayers uh, this day. Uh, friend Al Shane has moved to physical therapy and rehabilitation out of the hospital, for which we're thankful. Also, uh, JT Martin, uh, our member, is heading down to, uh, to Columbia to one of the hospitals for uh, some testing to see what his condition is on his foot and hopefully to be able to prompt some healing that'll reunite he and Miriam uh, and uh, others that we'll remember in our prayers uh, at that time. i uh, reading from Luke in the ninth chapter. When the days drew near for him to be taken up and set his face to go to Jerusalem and he and he sent messengers ahead of him. On their way, they entered a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him. But they did not receive him, <clears throat> because his face was set toward Jerusalem. And when his disciples James and John saw it, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? But Jesus turned Me. Jesus turned and rebuked them, and then they went on to another village. And as they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. To another he said, Follow me. But he said, First, Lord, let me go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, Let the dead bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Another said, I will follow you, Lord. But let me first say farewell to those at my home. And Jesus said to him, No one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. The word of the Lord. Good news wasn't always good news, was it? It was some harsh words of encouragement and showing and telling of what the sacrifices would be in placing one's life in the hands of Jesus, particularly in those days for the followers. Those who did choose to follow then knew the consequences and often suffered the consequences of their commitment, of their hearts and their souls and their lives. But nonetheless, they followed and Thanks be to God that they did so that they might proclaim to us in this day and in this distant tomorrow for them the word of God that has brought us to faith. The time may come for each of us to experience the same and uh, we pray that we will have the heart, the soul, and the will to follow in his way. A reading from Henry, Henri Nouwen in reaching out real training for service asks for a hard and often painful process of self-emptying the main problem of service is to be the way without being in the way and if there are any tools techniques and skills to be learned they are primarily to plow the field to cut the weeds to clip the branches, that is, to take away the obstacles for real growth and development. Training for service is not a training to become rich, but to come, become voluntarily poor, not to fulfill ourselves, but to empty ourselves, not to conquer God, but to surrender to his saving power. All this is very hard to accept in our own contemporary world, which tells us about the importance of, importance of power and influence. But it is important that in this world there remain a few voices crying out 
that if there is anything to boast of, we should boast of our weakness. Our fulfillment is in offering emptiness. Our usefulness is becoming useless. Our power in be is in becoming powerless. The word of the Lord. From Acts of Devotion by George Appleton, the following prayer. <clears throat> A prayer of thanksgiving for Jesus. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus, we, thy unworthy servants, do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all of humankind, and above all, for your inestim inestimable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for his humble birth in Bethlehem, most humble thanks, O God. For the taking of our nature, most humble thanks, O God. For the obedience of Nazareth, most humble thanks, O God. For his identification with sinful men at his baptism, most humble thanks, O God. For the search for thy will in the 40 days of prayer, most humble thanks, O God, for the simplicity and depth of his teaching. Most hearty thanks, O God, for his compassion on the suffering. Most, thank, most hearty thanks, O God, for his forgiveness of sinners. Most hearty thanks, O God, for the defenselessness of the cross. Most hearty thanks, O God. For the triumph of the resurrection, we bless thee, O God. For the glory of the ascension, we bless thee, O God. For his perpetual prayer for us in heaven, we bless thee, O God. And for the sending of the Holy Spirit, we bless thee, O God. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people and has raised up a mighty salvation for us in the house of his servant David, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people, for the remission of their sins, through the tender mercies of our God, whereby the day spring from on high has visited us. To thy name, Lord Jesus, help us to bow the knee and all its worshiping, bow the head and all its thinking, Bow the will and all its choosing. Bow the heart and all its loving. Today, tomorrow, and all the days of our life. Gracious God, you are our strength and our hope, our fortress and our salvation. We thank you for the gifts of your presence in our midst. And we ask that you would lead us and guide us in preparing a way for others that will follow, will, would choose to follow in your ways. Grant us, O Lord, wisdom, understanding, the knowledge of your will for us, that we might help others to discern their will for themselves in following you. We thank you, O God, for this day and the opportunities that lie within it. We thank you, O Lord, for your presence in this world to bring hope to the hopeless, help to the helpless, food for the hungry. You inspire so many, O Lord, to reach out and to do something good to help this world be a better place. Inspire each of us to do that in each and every day. And now we intercede for those who we would seek your healing care and presence. For J.T. Martin as he undergoes testings to determine the difficulties with his foot that there might be a healing. For Al Shane as he continues therapy that his body might find renewed strength and he might return home. For Becky, for Sarah in their continued fight with cancer. For Miguel, as he 
stands to find a new pathway away from drugs in his life. For Tom and Nikki and Lisa, for Miriam, for, for Bill, we pray for Hazel. We pray for Evelyn Tompkins and Evelyn Rag as they are experiencing difficulties and pains in their life. And we ask that you would bring your hand of healing to bear in all of these, our loved ones' lives, and those others whom we remember now. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you, to be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.